Welcome back. Today, I'm going to make a modification to my distillation unit slash hot water heater. Now, I designed this unit before I left uh, and packed up the barge. Did a bunch of tests on it before I left and it worked quite well. The, the basic principle is simple. Um, I boil water, create steam, pass that through a tube. This tube is not broken inside. Um, so this is one solid tube that goes inside, a coil. Uh, the steam passes through that coil, condenses on that coil, and out this line here comes distilled water, which I need for science out here. Now, I thought rather than just using a standard heat exchanger and expelling that, that heat, or dissipating that heat into the atmosphere and just wasting it, I'm on a power budget out here. So I decided that I'd like to try and use it. Um, my thought was that I could use the heat capacity in a body of water in this pressure vessel uh, to both condense the, the steam into distilled water uh, as well as heat this water for my own purposes out here. So I could have a hot shower, for example. I'll put uh, all of my CAD files uh, as well as uh, circuit uh, schematics and component lists and everything uh, on GitHub and I'll put a link to that in the description. But uh, just as a disclaimer, uh, bear in mind that, uh, you know, I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that anybody should build this uh, without, without knowing what they're already doing. And if you did, you'd probably want to do a different implementation anyway. As it is usually, after I, after I made this, uh, you know, there's several things that I'd like to do differently anyway, but it's fine for this purpose out here. My issue is that given the amount of power that I, on average received through my solar panels, this is too much draw. It's not that I couldn't heat this water and create some distilled water, I certainly could, but this is a standard, uh, this is a standard hot water heater element. And so it's a 1500 watt element. Now, my solar panels are, are, their capacity of my solar panels is great enough. It's just that where they are, uh, they don't get enough insulation to make use of their, their total capacity. And that's just limited by, you know, by the location that I could actually conceivably put them here. But unfortunately, that is the best spot for them. So it's not that I can change the amount of energy required to heat uh, this mass of water here. The heat capacity is not going to change of this water. But what I can do is reduce the amount of current that it uses at any one point in time. So I have another spare element. It's exactly the same, 1500 watts. So I'm gonna drill another hole and put them in series. So I'll have the amount of power that it's using at that point in time. It's just going to have to run twice as long. So to get the water to its uh, boiling point or its transition temperature. This, <laughs> this boiler uh, is actually a pressure cooker uh, or was a pressure cooker. You know, the water is filled up uh, through that uh, through that valve at the top again the whole system is pressurized so theoretically uh, when it we need to add water to this if the water is already hot we'll be adding already heated water uh, you know it reduces the amount of power that it's going to uh, take to get it back up to its boiling point the switch is open when the float is high and it's closed uh, when the float is low so when the float goes low I've got a little uh, a transistor or a MOSFET actually on the control circuit that turns on the solenoid valve through a relay uh, and lets water come out of the pressure cylinder through the top, through this port here, uh, and into this uh, boiler. So it'll continually add uh, water to the boiler as the, the water is boiled off. Obviously there's a, you know, there's a few things I need to do here uh, other than drill, drill the other hole. I need to find my other element. I'm not sure where, uh, where which barrel I've got it in right now as well. I need to insulate this thing. Yeah, let's get, let's get going. I've removed the uh, the boiler from that uh, the frame there. Might work. Uh, we're going to wire these in series, so. Uh, this will be the input, output, and we'll just put a jumper in between the two pins here. I let this uh, dry overnight because I just put some RTV uh, on the back side of that, high temperature RTV. And so now I place these two elements in series. 
So I wired in uh, some uh, 12 gauge, a standard house wiring here. Uh, this is good just for the test. And I, I wired it to the back of my uh, socket uh, that I've got mounted underneath the deck there. If it's not exactly clear, to, for those of you who aren't familiar uh, with electronics, it may not really make much sense that adding another element, uh, you know, halves the total amount of power this is going to draw. This is just a resistive uh, heating element. So it's very likely nichrome, uh, nickel chromium wire uh, in a, you know, in shielded uh, in a piece of stainless steel. And so it creates a, a few ohms of resistance. Now, when you put 120 volts across it, you'll get a given amount of current. Now, in this case, it's drawing uh, 1500 watts is the power consumption. So that's the amount of current in amps. Um, that's the amount of current in amps multiplied by the voltage. So it's quite simple. If I increase the amount of resistance, the amount of current that'll travel through this whole circuit here uh, will be reduced. And so in this case, I've added another element which will have pretty close to the same resistance. Uh, and so it's going to drop the amount of current or restrict the amount of electrical flow that's going to pass through them. So the element, there's a couple of effects of that. First, it doesn't draw immediately as much power. Second, the element won't get quite as hot, but it, that's not really a problem. It's certainly going to get hot enough to bring this water to a boil, and I've increased the surface area in there. So it's just going to take longer to bring this, uh, this mass of water uh, up to a certain temperature. So there's a few reasons I did that, uh, mostly just so that it fits with my average amount of power that my solar system is providing me so that I don't run a deficit while this thing is turned on. So I on average get at least, you know, a kilowatt on a day like today. And so if this thing's only drawing 750 watts when it's when it's heating the water and creating my distilled water, I'm still getting a little bit of charge into my batteries and I have some power surplus. If I let it, uh, you know, run at 1500 watts, not only would it load my, my 15 amp circuit uh, pretty close to its limit, it also would, you know, potentially every time, uh, you know, it would turn on, it would be depleting my batteries. And I could end up in a condition if I'm using extra power throughout that day uh, where I, I've run a net negative and throughout the day, throughout the day, I want my batteries to always get some charge. So at night I still have power. I'll wire this up. I'll pour the water in here and I'm just going to turn it all on uh, and take a measurement here uh, and then take a look at my uh, solar controller and just make sure that, that everything looks right uh, and that I'm actually heating the water. So... Let's get to it. Hope this goes without saying, but if you're not familiar with electronics, don't try this. Nice thing if you live in civilization. <laughs> when you design a, something like this up in a CAD program, you can just go get it made really quite inexpensive these days. First, I've got to put the water in. Unfortunately, when I designed this, I didn't really think about uh, emptying the water. I think I'm even gonna, just for this test, I'm gonna even wrap it a little bit, uh, just until I start getting it to boil. Because, I mean, this this is, I mean, it's a little cool out here right now. Um, and so, <laughs> I'm gonna lose a lot of energy uh, out of this uh, boiler if it's not insulated, so. I've configured this thing so it won't heat uh, if it senses the water level is low. Don't let my aluminum bar touch my element there and short things out. Of course, between these two points we should see a voltage drop across them. That we do. Okay, good. See I'm leaking here. Okay, well I guess I gotta fix that first. So power's off. You can hear the thing whirring away right now, and that's because uh, because of the draw. So from my solar panels, I'm getting 190 volts, 17 amps. This is pretty good actually. So I'm getting a kilowatt out of the panels. Um, I'm pulling 700 and 
you know, 715 watts, which is actually a bit lower than, uh, you know, than I calculated. It's what this thing assumes anyway. So we've got a net, net positive. My batteries are charging and I'm heating my water from my boiler. And if you're interested in such things, like I said, I'll put, uh, I'll put a link to all of this stuff on, on GitHub and then I'll put the link to that GitHub um, page in the description. But I can actually set this from zero degrees Celsius uh, above to, to above boiling, actually. Uh, and so I haven't restricted that uh, temperature sensor, you know, in a, in a proper product. You'd want to make sure that you couldn't set it to a nonsensical value. But, um, you know, I'm out here, it's non-standard, and who knows, maybe I just want to keep things from freezing, or I, I've decided I want to try and boil the water that's in my pressure vessel for whatever reason. I have the option. This is the water input. So when the, the float switch reads low, uh, water comes in from the top of this cylinder that will be filled. Now, obviously, otherwise, ooh, it's getting hot. Wired everything up here, just make sure it's all snug. The red LED down there is on, which means that the thing thinks it's at temperature. There we go. You can hear the uh, solar controller spool up there as it loads down, 750 watts. Well, I've done it. I might actually leave it like this. Uh, given that we're still in a temporary situation here, we can see that tight point is one handed here. But uh, just make sure there's no leaks. So the input to this unit is right here. And once again, you see that no water comes out of here. This would be the distilled water. That's steam uh, is going up this line, theoretically out of this boiler. Yeah. So with the pump running, that's the other thing too. This is both on the same circuit. So given this is only 700 watts, it can actually handle uh, running that pump at the same time. So we're filling up our uh, pressure vessel here. Air pressure should be building in here. There we go. I think we'll get a uh, tube for this. And then I'm going to wrap it back up because I think we are good. Uh, we're finally boiling. You can actually hear that here. Very soon, distilled water will start to come out of this uh, tube. So that's good news. Now, we're still a ways. It just started boiling, actually. And now, I only got this thing together later in the afternoon. I still have about six hours of sun, I think. So I think in that amount of time, I might actually get, uh, get some hot water out of this. What you're hearing is the uh, pressure switch, actually. Uh, sorry, the float switch bouncing on the top there. There we go. We are operating. So, creating distilled water as well as uh, heating up uh, my water tank. So, now from this point, once we've got steam going through that line, um, actually that, that water will warm fairly quickly. Uh, so, I should end up with, uh, with warm water in a couple hours at least. I'm going to put uh, this mylar on the inside, underneath that blanket, at least on the, uh, the hot water heater here, uh, to try and reflect some of that uh, infrared or radiant energy, uh, heat energy. And uh, then I'm going to wrap it in that uh, duvet cover and then wrap another layer of the mylar sheet, uh, or sorry, this emergency blanket around it uh, for a rain shield. Once again, you know, it would be a lot more efficient uh, if my goal was simply to heat water to just put one of these elements uh, in the main, <clears throat> pardon me, in the main pressure vessel. Just trying to capture some of that energy that would otherwise be lost to the atmosphere uh, in the process of distillation. A hot shower, that makes all the difference, I have to say. That, uh, that's a nice thing to have set up. 
I couldn't set that up again in the winter time because uh, I didn't really have enough energy uh, to spare uh, to run that unit. All of these little services uh, that someone can provide themselves that really makes the difference between, you know, uh, camping and, and living. That modification that we made uh, reduced the instantaneous load on the system to the point that it still allows my batteries to charge while I'm uh, making distilled water and, and heating uh, hot water. I think we're going to leave this one here. I've got a few preparations uh, to make before the rain comes, so we get that done. Hope you found that interesting and we'll see you next time.